My name is Curtis Rogers, and I am 80 years old, going to be 81 in three months. And you are not a police officer. You're not a retired police officer. Do you have any history in law enforcement? No history in law enforcement, none. So how are you connected then to the capture and the arrest of the Golden State Killer? Through a hobby. A uh, hobby. Never, never thought I would be tied up in with law enforcement in any way. A hobby has nothing to do with it as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. uh, suddenly, I am very deeply involved in law enforcement. The hobby is genealogy. Mm -hmm. And in genealogy, especially with a genetic genealogy having to do with DNA. And uh, in genealogy, we use a type of DNA that has not been used by law enforcement in the past. Um, and it turns out that this new type of, of uh, DNA is something that is very good at finding not only relatives, but uh, people of interest in, in crime cases. And so when you say the new type of DNA, is it just being submitted through technology, computers, or what's the new type that you're talking about? New type, it's called autosomal DNA. And when I say new type, uh, of course, autosomal has always been there, but it's only been since 2010 that uh, autosomal was, DNA was, uh, they figured out how to use autosomal DNA for finding relatives and finding uh, family. Uh, so it's, it's new in terms of being able to use it. And that's basically what people are doing right now, the big, the big rage, the, the big um, people doing their own DNA kits and their own DNA tests. Is that what you get or? Yeah, yeah. We do not do any testing. People mm -hmm. do testing on the various uh, DNA sites, mm -hmm. testing sites. Uh, initially, there were four or five key ones that did it for genealogy. Uh, we now have a program that we've developed where we can uh, use DNA that's done by even non-genealogical testing companies. So we have uh, at least some 20 different uh, testing companies whose information we can use on our site. So it's from companies around the world. And so tell me... Hold on one second. Okay. Just want to double check. Okay. And so um, tell me, um, this is, now you started this hobby in 2010. Tell me about what you started and, and how you started it. Uh, what I started, well actually before then I had a little website for the Rogers Surname Project through one of the companies called Family Tree DNA. Uh, on that I had met a person who uh, could do computer work because I wanted to have some uh, tools on my site that were more interactive than what was being offered through this other company. Uh, so I met him. But anyway, and what happened in 2010 is that all of a sudden autosomal DNA was recognized as something that is very helpful in finding relatives. Uh, and everyone's suddenly finding living relatives. And they started writing each other emails. Uh, is this, this person a member of your family? No, but is this person a member? And, and we would spend hours. I did it myself. And I went to this friend that I had who was good with the computer and said, look, could we come up with a program where we could just compare family trees and not have to do all this writing back and forth? He came up with a program that was so special uh, that I said, it's too good for my little website. Uh, let's share it with all the other researchers out there. And that's how GEDmatch started. And you would describe GEDmatch as? GEDmatch is still very much kind of a little site. There are no employees. We're not a big company. We're not trying to earn money or, or uh, uh, build statistics on our site. Uh, it's just uh, we're out there to help fellow genealogical researchers. So how did it come about that not only were you helping people find maybe relatives that they didn't know about, how did you start solving cold cases? <laughs> didn't have any idea that genealogical, uh, uh, genealogy was gen genealogical. Uh, genealogical genealogy, mm -hmm. was being used to do cold cases. Uh, until one morning uh, when I uh, rolled over to look at my uh, 
uh, cell phone to see what emails had come in in the nighttime, and someone said to me, it was just announced that Jed Match was involved in catching the Golden State Killer. Uh, and that was the first I really knew about it. I, as I say, I was not involved in any law enforcement prior to that time. What did you know about the Golden State Killer? Not, I really didn't know much of anything. I had heard the night before a report about this horrendous criminal in, in California that had been caught by the name of uh, Golden State Killer, uh, but I didn't know at that time that we were involved in it, so I really didn't know anything about him. When you find out that you have your company has something to do with it, did you want, did you think how or how did law enforcement get a hold of me or get a hold of my company? Like how did they make the connection there? Um, they made the connection because a person who was very experienced doing genealogy uh, had contacted them, mm -hmm. or they contacted her. I'm not sure which. Uh, and and she offered to help them to use uh, GenMatch to find this some cold cases, and that was the primary one that they had on their docket. It, it, oh, okay. Hold on, Jen. Oh. Go your head. Yeah. All right. Here, there you go. No, a little shiny there. There you go. Yeah, I'm Jen. That's okay. a little bit better. She's so cool. <laughs> 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 I know, it's getting hot in here, right? <laughs> I, I, I must be sitting in the best spot in the house because the cool air is like literally oh, right. You, you, yeah, I was about to say, it is right on top of me. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's. <laughs> You, you don't have any notes or anything, you just plow ahead with this. Well, yeah, because I think it's better. I don't need to, I think All it's right. better as a conversation between us. Because, I, yeah, I just know what I want to add. And I think it's just my own knowledge. I think that's what makes it a good story, is I think everybody else has the same questions I do. So, I don't, yeah, I don't like to take anything from anybody else. I just, yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so then tell me, how did they, how did they, how did they, so law enforcement is able to get to your website or were you, was this a case that you guys were already looking into? No, no. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they uh, used our website uh, with the help of this very expert genealogist mm -hmm. by the name of Barbara Ray Vendor. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's still working with them. She's still working on cases. But she created this whole revolution of using genetic genealogy for finding uh, cold cases. And so, how, so did somebody, how, did, how were you guys connected? Somebody submit DNA that was a family member of his? Or how did they make the match and use you guys? OK. They had to have autosomal DNA mm -hmm. that they could put on our site. That means anytime there's a cold case, they have to be able to have something from which they can do a new modern test on genealogy. Mm -hmm. They did that. They had some, there's a, fortunately, a, a second test tube that was available from the Golden State Killer that had been kept stored away in a refrigerator all these years. So they had something they could do a new test from. They did the autosomal DNA test from that. They put it on our site. Uh, we put it at a, a place where other people can't see it. We have a special area. Mm -hmm. They put it. They, they put out that on our site, and it matched up with uh, something like 24, 25 uh, third cousins. So there was no one person that you could say it was their DNA that found the Golden State Killer. Mm -hmm. It was all of these people, uh, and using that, going back through family trees, and using a whole lot of other uh, databases they were able to come up with who this this person of interest let me let me make the point that that uh, it, uh, there is no uh, violent criminals found on our database people think of us in terms of the your father's uh, forensics I call it mm -hmm. it's not at all like that what we do in in genetic genealogy is to point in a direction for further investigation. And if it's successful, the, we, the uh, genetic genealogy comes up with a person of interest. 
Once that happens, police are then at the point where they would like to have been at the very beginning of the case, because generally there's you know some people who have a motive for killing or whatever. Um, then they have a person of interest that's been given to them by genetic genealogy, and uh, they have to then do their regular forensics to verify is this the right person and to uh, name it as a, as a suspect and arrest him if it's appropriate. So we don't name the killers. We don't name the rapists. We being genetic genealogy. Uh, we simply find persons of interest and then leave it up to the police department, police for law enforcement, to prove whether this is the right person or not. So you, you wake up that morning, you look at the emails, you see that you have you know, you have been linked to this, to this arrest. What is your initial thought? Shock and confusion. I did not know what to expect. I had not thought that we were doing something like this. And I was really concerned about the effect that this would have on people who had put their information on JetMatch because they put their information on there thinking that they're going to be finding relatives, not that their information is going to be used to find cold case, uh, vicious criminals. Um, it literally took me about two weeks of non-sleep trying to figure out just what was happening, how it was happening, uh, what was involved, and how it would affect GEDmatch and genealogy in, in general. Uh, but I became convinced that there really is no loss of privacy, and that was one of my big concerns. Uh, using this procedure and uh, and an awful lot of good was being done. So at that point I became much more comfortable with it. And what has the reaction been for your company since the news broke? Overwhelmingly uh, uh, supportive. It's amazing. It's uh, We get all kinds of emails from people who whose lives have been affected by some of these criminals or or who just imagine that they could be affected and they, uh, a lot of people who say I want to make sure that I'm on your site in fact we even had a person who put, said that they wanted to be on our site because their father was a serial killer and they wanted to make sure that their information her information was on our site as much as possible in case there were any unsolved cases out there from her father she wanted to make sure that any families of people involved had some finality, some closure. Um, and we've had other people also who have a lot of criminals in their families. I want to be on your site. Uh, the people who could be affected the most, I think, are out there really wanting this to happen. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who are saying, no, no, there's a violation of privacy. I just don't think that that's true. And so it's basically your site, once they submit the DNA, there's law enforcement working with the DNA, they're able to go and look at your information or do law enforcement have to ask permission to look at your database? Like, or is there just no, once somebody submits the DNA, law enforcement has all rights to see what you guys have collected? One of the big misunderstandings, people think that law enforcement can get on our site and just start rummaging through it, see everyone's information doesn't happen, can't happen. On our site, people, uh, first of all, we, we don't have, we don't show any DNA on our site. Mm -hmm. uh, on our site, you have to put information on our site and then you will find matches to that particular information. You cannot just start rummaging through everyone's DNA or everyone's information. Mm -hmm. it, it can't happen. So they see a very limited little group of people who may match distantly, generally, mm -hmm. um, this uh, DNA that they put on from the cold case. And do they have to contact you first before they're going on there? Or, okay. No, they don't have to contact us. Okay. Uh, we have done a, everything I can to educate our users that law enforcement is using the site. When, uh, when people put their DNA on or their information on our site, uh, they have to say whether they're law enforcement or not. So they recognize, we, we point out right from the start that there are law enforcement uses for this site. Uh, interviews like this, 
uh, I've done a lot of interviews, and that's not something I'm necessarily comfortable with, uh, but we've done everything we can to educate our people that law enforcement is there. How many DNA submissions do you guys get a day? Uh, we get about a thousand cases a day, a thousand uh, DNA sample kits of DNA a day. So even with your name out there and, and linked to the Golden State Killer, it's just keeping business going. I don't, I don't know if it's, you know, really the uh, statistics before and after the Golden State Killer have been very similar in terms of the number of kits that we're getting on our site. So it didn't hurt you. You were scared about that, you said, and it did it, not. You know, for a day or two, there were, there were a bunch of people that took their information off. I think that day or two, it, it just about balanced out people who were putting information on and taking it off. Um, but uh, no, I, it's, it's pretty much the same now as it was before. Did you ever think, you said you started this to connect people with their family members. Now that you are helping solve some cold cases, what do you think about that? It is so heartwarming to get the emails that we get from people who've been affected. Um, I never realized how many people are out there who have spent their lives, decades, upset because they can't find their daughter or because there's been a murder in their family and it's not been settled. There are tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people like this. And now I'm starting to realize how many there are. Especially I mean, when we went into the Christmas season. Um, thinking, you know, this is a time of family, and, and yet there had all these families that just couldn't be happy because of cases. Yeah, it's so heartwarming to be a part of solving these cases, to helping these people get some finality. And it's, to me, it's not necessarily getting even with a criminal. Mm -hmm. To me, it's helping these people who have been hurting for so long. Find that closure. Yeah. And I mean, we're not in a police agency. We are literally in a, what, 900 square foot house, would you say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, Palm Beach Post, which is the big newspaper in this county, mm -hmm. uh, ran a front page story on me. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, they called me uh, perhaps the uh, most effective uh, criminal investigator in the county. You know, I thought, oh boy, that just made a bunch of enemies. But I've been visited by some of the police here. Yeah. They, they laugh at it. Yeah. And so what, what? I mean, so basically, you just started this company and this this house. Mm -hmm. Was this always supposed to be this? This yeah, like was, like this? It was supposed to be my office primarily for for. Uh, uh, doing uh, my professional guardianship work, uh, but it's become now totally gen match and genealogy. I mean, covered with what files? I mean, how many? We have files all over the place, and these are all genealogy files? It, there's some genealogy, and there's uh, some that are from my guardianship. Have you any other cold cases have you been able to um, help with? since the Golden State Killer before or after? I, I don't uh, like to really get involved in helping the police mm -hmm. or helping law enforcement because I'm still concerned that there may be the appearance of some sort of conflict of interest. People are putting their information on their site for genealogy and have you been Why told of any other matches, though? Do you know of any other? Have you been told at all that you know they've had a match for any other cold cases? In the first 11 months, it's just been 11 months since the Golden State Killer. I know of 43 cases that have been announced, and I'm sure there's some others out there that haven't been announced yet. Because of matches with your site? Because of matches with every one of them we've been involved in. Yes. That has to be heartwarming. It really is. I say everyone we've been involved in. There was one case that actually another website uh, really gave the best information on it. Mm -hmm. but other than that one, every one of them we've been totally involved in. Mm -hmm. And we were involved in that one too. But mm -hmm. not, not the big, okay. not the final person. Okay. So Golden State Killer, that was like the biggest one of, do you know of any, like were that any other ones serial killers too? Or were they murders or just violent crimes? Or do you not have the details? 
Um, yeah, I have the details. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're serial killers and a lot of rapists. Uh, it's amazing how many of these cold cases there are out there. I had someone who went to a little little town here uh, and went to the police department and said, you know, I'm a genealogist, can I help you with any? And they had some like 14 or 15 rape cases and, you know, uh, some murder cases that hadn't been solved. And that was just a little police department. There are so many around the country. Wow. And are these cases, these 43 cases, all across the country or Florida? Yeah. They're just all across? All across the country. Wow. And any in Florida? One, I think there are about three of them from Florida. Mm -hmm. Right here in your backyard. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yeah. Um, and so uh, what now for you guys? Just keep on doing what you started in 2010. Got a tiger by the tail and don't know what to do with it, so I guess we're can't do much except let him shake it, shake it, and mm -hmm. we'll try and follow. Mm -hmm. The DNA just keeps on coming in. Keeps coming in. Keeps coming in. Yeah. And there's still so many cold cases, unfortunately, it seems, unsolved. It seems to be building. Yeah, it does. Uh, there's. Yeah. It, 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 you're right. Yeah. What is this work? I don't know. I could look it up. We can look it up on the... If, if you were to describe, you can look at Jen, but if you were to describe this, this your office, I mean, the designer here stacks the papers, and tell me, tell me, oh. Jen, tell Jen a little bit about it. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely not, we're not, we're definitely not at Miro Largo in this place. This is, how would you describe it? I would describe it as a, a, a man cave, <laughs> you know. Um, it's... Uh, Good for storing all my stuff, good for storing my wife's paintings, but unfortunately we're going to have to move because the city wants to uh, take this over to make it into a parking lot, which is kind of interesting because this is a historic house, and it was historic before we'd been here, but since we've been here, it's been on 60 Minutes, they took pictures from the front, and the New York Times, and, and um, newspapers around the world have had pictures of this house, but it'll be a parking lot. Really? And so when are you going to have to move out of this? By June. I told him I wanted to have that much time. We'll move out much quicker than that, but I just didn't want to be pushed. So I gave him a time in the future when I knew we could do it. Your office, I mean, it's probably what, four, well, not, what would you say, 500, 400, maybe 200 square feet? How big would you estimate your office to be? You mean the whole building? Your office. Uh, my office? It's probably... Maybe 150 square feet, 200, could be, yeah. How many files do you think you have around here for, for, your, for, for the genealogy? Oh, I've got boxes of them. Let's just put it that way, yeah. And the cold cases that you said that you still have in there, you have, there are cold cases you have files for. Tell me about that. I've tried to keep a file on every cold case that I know has been announced. Uh, and I, as I say, I have 43 of them at this point. Uh, it's it's quite a heavy stack of cases. Uh, I I try and try and get the reaction of the families and the people who've been helped by them. You know, if I can get that type of information, that's, that's something I I really enjoy. I like to have. So the forty three files you have, those are files that you know that you've heard from law enforcement that said that there's been some sort of match or something through your website. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's and so that's what yeah. yeah. So not well. That, uh, they're all, all they've all talked in terms of genetic genealogy, but in most cases, if there's any question about whether they're talking about us, I can usually. There, there's a small group of really experienced genealogists who are helping law enforcement, and I can contact them. I, we're all good friends. Oh, you are. Oh, yes. Sure. Yeah, I mentioned this one woman who had said that she wanted to be on our site. Uh, she, uh, because she wanted to make sure there was finality for any cases that were not solved, um, she, she wrote me this, it was just two, two lines, email, saying that she wanted to be on our site for that purpose. So I, I admit, I had tears. I, this really got to me that some 
person would be so strong and so caring that they would want to make sure that their family was out there. This is very early, one of the earliest emails I got. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what kind of reaction to expect from people. Um, so, she, so I contacted, wrote her back and asked her more about it. And she sent me the whole police file because I wanted to make sure that she wasn't just some kook making this up. And she wasn't. Uh, she had uh, lived a, a pretty vicious life, I guess, with her father and, and uh, knew that he was someone who was capable of doing these things. Um, and so she really wanted to help other people, and that, that was very important to me. And was she, um, and you've been in touch with her, correct? For a while? Yeah, I keep in touch with her quite a bit, um, primarily because when other people hear about this case, they, they want to talk to her, interviewers especially. So I always contact her and say, look, if you're interested in talking to these people, mm -hmm. uh, get in touch with them this way. So she's been doing that. I, I, I guess I had tears because she was putting herself at some risk, certainly her reputation, who knows, maybe even something more than that, uh, could lose her friends, but she, she wanted to help people. She was caring uh, and she was willing to take any kind of a risk. and she is to this day, she still wants to put herself out there so that she can tell other people about how important it is that we, we have in genetic genealogy, this ability to find people like her father. It's, it's it, uh, just, she was so strong to be able to do this and so caring. And you're, are you, you're a grandfather, right? About to be a great grandfather. Yes. <laughs> so do your grandkids and great grandkids know what uh, how popular their grandfather and great grandfather is these days? My my daughter. I have two two daughters and two sons. My daughter, who has done fantastic things in her life that that just blow my mind away, uh, calls me a rock star. And I, and other people have said that too, which is kind of embarrassing to me. But I was thinking about that just, just a day or so ago. Not only was I called that by her, but shortly thereafter, Rolling Stone magazine had an article on me. So, <laughs> you know, so, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's great. That is great. So, um, anything else? You, I think for, I think what we're hoping to get is, um, Angela's gonna kinda, take the reins and kind of, we kind of just want to get like video of you like walking to your computer, kind of just doing what you do. Playing on the yeah, do keyboard. What, yeah, do, do what you do. Do, some, yeah. Yeah, do, what, do whatever you do, pretend like we're not here, and then um, we'll definitely get you opening some of the cold cases too. Okay. The 43, the, the files that you have there. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, there are probably some other points that I should make mm -hmm. about mis misunderstandings mm -hmm. that there are and, and potential. Um, I wrote someone yesterday about that. Let me let me get my little list and refresh my mind okay. because I'd like. Okay, that's fine. Oh yeah, that's one of the things I didn't want to say. You got it. Um, in terms of of people's privacy being violated. Uh, one of the things that people can do on our site, and we encourage them to do it, is to use an alias instead of their name and to make up a, 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 a email address that they use strictly for our site. That way, they're invisible. Uh, they don't have to answer when people contact them. They know that people are contacting them through our site. And people do not know their real email address that they use for buying from Amazon or mm -hmm. on Facebook, and they don't know their real name. So they're invisible. So uh, it's, it's just one of the ways in which people can be, keep their privacy on our site. 
I have one thing really quick. Um, so San Diego police say they, they arrest this man and you find out you're linked to it. Do they call you to say, hey, thanks? Haven't heard from them at all. I have written them. I have asked them because after the Golden State Killer, they learned enough from this uh, genealogist who's very experienced. Mm -hmm. They learned enough from her that they now can do it on their own. They've picked up how to find these cold, solve these cold cases, and they've solved at least three of them. So I wrote from them your as, website. Uh, from our website, yeah. So I wrote them and I said, "Look, please let me know uh, when you solve these cases, because I like to keep a record of it." And they said, "I'm sorry, we can't talk to you." And to give me the heads up the next time my company makes the headlines, so I yeah, can have a it, little bit of a. That's exactly right. Exactly right. It. I. That's one of the reasons I want to know. And certainly initially, it's going to be a little bit more accepted now. But initially, every time there's a cold case out there, boom, I was hit with a lot of publicity. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I wanted to know it ahead of time mm -hmm. so I could respond if I could. You're absolutely right. You hit it on the head. Yeah. How did you find out that you, that you had helped solve the Golden State Killer case? I found out when, when uh, I looked at my cell phone mm -hmm. that morning, rolled over in bed and checked the emails. Mm -hmm. and. Someone said, hey, they just announced that Jed Match is involved in finding the Golden State Killer. Got to the office that morning, and there were satellite trucks lined up and down this little narrow street here, and uh, it was raining, so that all, a bunch of reporters, they all, well, can we come in? It's raining. You know, <laughs> I wasn't really sure I wanted them to come in, and you know, because they might start getting into things that way. So. <laughs> but I, I did let some of Perfect. This is a very simple question, but sorry. <laughs> sorry, but but uh, why do people go onto your site, your website? Uh, which is kind of like asking, why are they interested in genealogy? Because they go on for genealogy, and they go on because there there are really two reasons. Number one, Ancestry.com is advertising tremendously in terms of find your, your past, your history, who, 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 who are you related to? You know, and they have these programs on television, uh, who, who is your past? Mm -hmm. um, so there are a lot of people just interested in that. I want to find out that I'm related to a famous person uh, or a really interesting person. Um, and, and the second one is they want to find living relatives. Uh, when they go on our site, it's basically a free site and they can find 3,000 living relatives. Uh, many of them may be more distant relatives, most of whom they never knew they had, but, but they, uh, they can do that and then they can start communicating and finding out more about their family and their background and what other people know because the other people they meet on our site are also interested in genealogy and they probably have also done a, a lot of work on, on finding the family history. And so, what, what, what your position with um, Jed Match? Which, are you the, the creator, the developer? What would your position be? My position is that I, well, I kind of like to think I'm creator, but I, I, um, I did not develop the, the algorithms, and I never could, and so I really give a lot of kudos to my partner, uh, who who has done all the technical work. Uh, I'm, I'm the business person. He's the, it's the, so you and your partner. Or like the, the co-founders of this yes. website. Oh, yeah. And he's the one in Texas. He's in and Texas. And his name is? John Olson. John Olson, okay. And we have another three people who have volunteered, and they work with him on the technical end of it. Uh, I do the business stuff, and I finance and contacting the uh, uh, users of our site and handling emails, that type of thing. Um, You're a retired businessman. Yes, yeah. yes, I am. Yeah, I was in international business for many years. Cool. Okay. I think we are good. Andrew, you have anything? Laura, you have anything? Yeah. I think what we'll do now is what we were talking about. Yeah, so Angela will kind of lead you the way and just kind of whatever you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah.